Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to talk about three of the very strongest heroes in the game that a lot of players sometimes struggle to optimise. And the first hero that I'm going to talk about today and perhaps the best example of this is D.Va. So where do I even start? Never has such a powerful hero been wasted by so many people so often. That sounds unbelievably harsh Eddie. And it is, and I'm sorry, but it is still true. D.Va is arguably the best hero in the game at the moment. And that's still possibly true even if her PTR mini rocket nerfs comes to the live server. She is spectacularly under optimised, mostly because a lot of players mismanage her matrix and spend way too much time out of mech. I've been that guy, I've been that mini diva main. Hey, back off. The bunny blaster is actually pretty good. But because Defense Matrix can absorb almost infinite damage, people aren't afraid to use it. But the problem, much like Ryan's shield, comes when players don't have it for when they really need it because they've wasted it on irrelevant damage before a fight has even started. When one watches pro divas, this becomes startlingly clear. Dive is everywhere at that level, and Diva Winston is perhaps the best synergy in the game in that context. Having a Winston initiate with a diva defense matrixing him extends his life massively and it can also eat precious enemy abilities used to try and catch the dive like sleep darts, anti-nades and flashbangs and gives him and your team the space to really make a play. But that only works if Winston doesn't die immediately and for that to happen D.Va can't have used all her resource before the fight actually starts. In matchmaking it's even worse actually. The synergy I'm describing is rarely executed properly. People pick Winston D.Va all the time but in a lot of cases their play is disjointed and can often lead to instant death gorilla syndrome and mini diva mania. Winston could be going in before his team are set to follow or critically and most often the diva player fails to follow him and use one of the most powerful tools in the game where it's most effective. Instead choosing to attack something else entirely or shoot ineffectively from distance like her guns are auto snipers. They're not. In fact I'm fairly convinced that if you're shooting from far enough away they actually heal the enemy. That's how much damage you're doing. Attacking the wrong targets is also a big deal. D.Va can eat squishies alive. People don't respect how quickly she can burst something down with rockets, melees and her shotgun like weapons. But too often I see D.Va's fighting something she can't kill quick enough at the start of a fight. Sure, focusing a Roadhog down with your team at the end of a fight is fine after you've killed his supports. But at the beginning of a fight when his support network is still alive and keeping him up? That's a fast track to throw down. D.Va is a bit of a victim of her own power. Because she's so good and can do so much, people play her as if she can't be killed or dealt with. She can quite swiftly actually if you're making it easy for your opponents. A big part of that is the way people feel they have to be active all the time. That doesn't just apply to D.Va, a lot of heroes suffer when played that way. That neutral state as you're grouping up or deciding what and where to dive is incredibly important. You can lose a whole fight before it's begun just by trying to brawl all the time. D.Va can eat grabs, pulse bombs and save people from hog hook follow up, but she can't do any of that if she's out of mech already. A lot of people use her matrix like it's a Rhine shield. It isn't, and the best divas use it sparingly to actively catch something dangerous. Tapping the Matrix can catch a Helix rocket bound for your low health support, or the Zen volley aimed at your Ryan's head. Deliberately using it for a purpose is much better than aimlessly using it in a lazy way, like it's a shield that you can just hold up forever. Essentially, if you play D.Va like she's a main tank and not the off tank that she actually is, you and your team can be in big, big trouble. Moving on to the next hero, we're going to talk a little bit about Moira. Now, Liam has previously made videos about the dreaded DPS Moira playstyle, and that is a big part of how people play her poorly, but it's actually a symptom of a much deeper problem. Much like D.Va in this way, Moira is very popular because her kit is so dynamic and varied. You can do a lot with her. She feels very empowering to play, and that's the real cause of why people make missteps with her. Yes, she can do damage. Yes, she does have damage orbs, but her actual power lies in the vast healing potential she possesses and in her ability to stay alive with evasion mechanics to do that healing job. Let's say for argument's sake that you're not trying to be a pseudo DPS when you play her. There's still many ways in which you can waste her potential. The most common example with Moira is using her healing resource to heal teammates who don't need healing. That sounds crazy, but it's something Moira players do all the time, as if by habit. With other healers, say like Mercy, it doesn't really matter if you're just constantly keeping your beam on someone already at full health preemptively or just through instinct. 
cards. But Moira has a finite resource, which if wasted, can leave your team without your healing when they most need it, forcing you to try and have to do damage and get it back. Again, think on the Rhine Shield example. If as Rhine you're blocking meaningless poke damage and allow your shield to be weak when the actual fight begins, it can be broken easily, leaving those behind it exposed. Moira's healing is very similar. Its potential burst in a clutch moment on multiple teammates is why she's so strong. But if you don't have that resource, it's rip rippity rip. A mistake I made for a while, and I still see others do as well, is using a healing orb too early, as if it's some kind of initiation tool for your team to follow and use as they attack. Now that's a nice idea in some ways, but it doesn't work out like that. Essentially what you've done is waste a cooldown when you didn't need to, potentially leaving yourself ineffective when your team actually needed that orb. She also suffers from a similar problem to what I described with D.Va. Strong hero, great kit, people want to be active or doing something with her all the time. Overwatch is about doing the right thing at the right time, not just something all the time. If a Moira manages her cooldowns and resources properly, she can seem incredibly oppressive and one of the very best matchmaking heroes in the entire game. If not played right, your team will likely get walked through. And finally, we're going to have a little talk about Junkrat. Ah, the classic flanking rat. Now, it is possible to do, but like many other risky plays, you have to get huge impact in a very short space of time, otherwise you're effectively throwing. If you're in a team fight against another Junkrat and you're off flanking, your team will definitely lose the shield wall without your massive damage and most likely get destroyed. The window for flank playmaking with Rat is incredibly small sometimes. It's the time it takes for the enemy Junkrat to break your team's shield and delete your tanks and healers. As I said, it's not impossible and can sometimes work spectacularly, but be aware that it is a massive risk. Junkrat excels in volume span damage into tight geometry and using his minds to burst things down when they're all huddled together. If you want to flank, perhaps play a hero more designed for that purpose, like say, a flanker hero. Something else people do with Junkrat is pick him all the time or where he isn't very good because they know in some abstract way that he's really strong right now as a hero. He's really strong at doing a particular thing and there are maps and scenarios where it'll be difficult for even the best Junkrats to get a foothold in a match. He does nothing against Pharmacy for example, so picking him on maps where that synergy is really strong is not the best idea. Playing a map with massive big open spaces that Farah can exploit? Not Junkrat's best use I'm afraid. Horizon attack first point, now you're talking. In conclusion, there are some heroes potential is just so vast that it's criminal how little value we can extract from them sometimes. I'm guilty of a lot of the mistakes on this list, I'm not judging players, but I do think we could all learn from one key point. It's not a wise idea to play a hero just because you think they're strong without grasping exactly why they're considered that way. If you're playing a top tier hero, but not that well, your opponents don't have to do much to outstrip your value and beat you. In some ways, the better the hero, the higher the pressure to perform, especially if they're also very, very popular. You'll have to let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Who are some of the most under-optimized heroes in the game in your opinion? I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad. You'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the Overwatch Twitter. It's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time...